And we should be back. Sorry about that. Um, internet uh, had a uh, wibbly. Yeah, uh, it decided to cut out for 30 seconds and it put the entire uh, stream into whack. Uh, but we will be back. We'll uh, give it a minute or so for people to trickle in again. Uh, Sam's going to post about uh, getting a new link up. Uh, but yeah, sorry about the, the, that uh, problem, but we uh, see. We'll be back on schedule very shortly. In the meantime, for those who mm. are in, I'll show have a quick show you around Walton. Obviously, it's not the hot, uh, the main focus of it, but I know some people will be interested. Uh, but this is, at the moment, there's no custom assets other than that placeholder. Um, and it's just uh, a bit of kit bashing to make the rural station uh, using some Tudor houses. Um, this is actually a... a town memorial structure it's, I think it's in the West Highland pack and I then put clock faces on it to make the tower that is actually, well, it was very similar to that uh, in reality what do you guys think? Well I'm currently just um, posting about <laughs> but uh, as, uh, as from what I've seen so far it looks fantastic and I'm actually really looking forward to that route, I'm excited for it Oh, I'm That's excited a, to get it out. Particular route I'm really excited for. Yeah. Indeed, I'm excited to get it out and out to mm. everyone. Uh, what about well, you? I say, guys, Jordan. apologies for the technical issue. As Brad said, uh, his internet just literally just died for like 30 seconds or so, and uh, and so literally it just uh, messed the stream up, didn't it, Brad? It Indeed. ruined it. Um, so we've had to do a part two, as it were. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Really uh, as as LJ Train says, things like this happen. Not to worry, indeed, mm. indeed you do. Anyway, as I was saying before we cut uh, cut off, uh, the point I was sort of making was that um, yeah, you you can uh, you can be pedantic about some of these things, some of these small errors that aren't fixable, uh, but you have to manage your expectations based on what the product is. So as a freeware, the reason why we're sort of uh, we are being so positive about it. It's because someone has taken, you know, it's, it's their time, their free time. Uh, they're not profiting off it. They're doing it because they love doing it. Um, and they've made a very decent product out of it. So I think, you know, you need to be very supportive of that and not hold it to the same standards as a payway project, if you, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, and uh, b before we went, I was, I was actually about to talk about um, the fact that you can change the, um, the 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 discs from lamps to discs, can't you, on the head code? Indeed. Which is a really good, interesting feature on it. I can't remember what is it. Isn't it Control One? It's it's H on um, on oh, there. There we go. You yeah. can scroll through them on H. Brilliant. To be and honest, we need to do uh, that anyway. In your case, if you're your yep. light engine, so you would have the, the small uh, one at the bottom, wouldn't you? Now, uh, we, we're going to put on this because um, obviously, that what we're doing today, we're just about to back on to this coach, uh, and this is going to be used today uh, to act as the Royal Saloon. Uh, the scenario we're doing it's only a free roam, but uh, the whole story behind it is uh, the King George VI uh, wants to, is currently at his estate at Sandringham, over there, and it's in the, this morning he's decided to take him and the rest of the royal family on holiday. Uh, they're already on holiday at Sandringham, but they want to go up to the coast at Hunstanton. So yeah, that is that's the scenario for today, which is why we have got the royal head code. Um, <laughs> Neil, that's uh, yeah. People can always ask for a refund if they don't like this free product. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a, oh well, yeah, very good, very good. Well, there, there, you know, there is, there is always things, um, you know, things you could say, um, but as I say, I think you have to be mindful of how, what standards you hold it to, and and how you word it. I mean, for me, um, the one thing I would say is I think the particles linger for quite a bit too long, uh, and subsequently they can cause a fair bit of lag for me, even when I've got a decent, semi-decent machine, if I'm near 
this block of particles it, it will cause quite a fair bit of lag so i think that's my main ask is maybe um to control maybe turn down how long the the life of the particles is now um, funny thing is though brad you say that i don't get that on my one yeah well this is the most recent test version so i'm not yeah, sure i don't I don't get that many particles, not on my version. Do you get that many particles um, mm. on yours, Jordan? Um, yeah, I, I, I did notice a bit of particles, but it's not like a... I wouldn't say it was an absolute major thing for me. Yeah, it's, it's not like that visible. massive clump. Mm. Just I be don't a... understand why that's happening on your version, Brad. It could be something to do with your digital traction particles or something, couldn't it? Could be. Uh, I haven't edited them, I don't think. But I do find, you'll fit, see as well when we get going, they do linger for a very, very, very long time. What version of the Digital Traction B12 have you got? Have you got, the v, have you got version 3? I've got the latest one that there is, I'm sure. Yeah, so that'll be version 3. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd see, I, 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 don't, I personally, I, I don't have that many particles on mine, so whether it's something to do with the game or, you know what I mean, the settings, I don't know. Strange. But I don't have that many. Well, as you know, I was a beta tester for all the DT for some time, so I could have got a different build. I'm not sure, because I was given, as a beta tester, I was you know, legally given a lot of their catalogue. Um, I could have got a different build. I don't, I don't know. Uh, we, we, hmm. we just don't know on that front. But yeah, that is the one well, factor it, that's it different. It would just be interesting to see other people's feedback on it. Indeed, yeah. Indeed. Right, buffer up. There we go. Yeah, so, and also as well, it's another feature that this uh, this D16 has is it does have um, changeable head uh, head coats. We've done those. Yeah. Changeable headboards, which are on uh, Control H for the headboards, Indeed. and they scroll through, and then there's Shift H to uh, Control Shift H to go back. Indeed. Which is interesting. If we can show that off at uh, Hunstant, and I will, but we'll keep the royal head code on here because uh, they'll clash. If I try and put a headboard on there. But uh, these, th we're just getting some support coaches, and then we'll buffer up and get the Royal Coach on back into the platform and uh, then get going. So we've been rambling yeah, for some time. Yeah, Neil's just replied in, in the chat saying it's easy to tweak with the, with the particles, so, but, but yeah, it's, it's interesting because I, 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 I personally don't have too many particles on mine. I, I don't know what yeah. it is. I'm not I sure. I really don't have that many. I just see, mm. uh, see, there is a, it's like a flood, and it does sometimes flood the engine and carriages. And also, I'm finding yeah, see, I don't, honestly, I don't get that issue on mine. I literally, I don't get it. So I don't, mm. I don't know why you've got it because I, I, I've never had that. <laughs> Strange. It's also a case that uh, I seem to be, well, it's, it's doing correctly now, but here I seem to be blowing off when I'm building up pressure is again a bit weird and the fact that the exhaust is happening you know mm. we're getting exhaust when i'm on zero percent uh, regulator just some odd things i've noticed it, you know they're not major flaws they don't break it for me I, I still love this thing but just some little things i've noticed in terms of particles yeah neil said again that he hasn't had that many that much of a linger on his one either so it must be something on your end brad because probably i've never had that much as I say, the, mm. the only difference will have been uh, that I have uh, I have beta tested the DT in the past, so I say probably got a different build of the B12 at some point along the line. Yeah, it could have been picked up while you was beta testing with digital traction, couldn't it? Yeah, so I say. Don't know. I don't. I don't know. Uh, I'm not in contact with the guys there anymore, so I'm not sure what it is. Uh, there's also cases I do know they were messing around with different particles. Um, and patched into other locos other than the B12, maybe it was a common one and just carried across. I'm, again, I genuinely don't know. It's uh, strange. Maybe, maybe some of the scripts did. I you say it's uh, all up for the, all up for uh, you know, all up in the air. It will be very interesting, especially as well. To uh, is this constant blowing off? Uh, an issue for you at all, Neil? That you've known of? It's known thing. I haven't heard that said as a known bug currently i think that's honestly i think that's a thing on the b12 because the b12 does exactly the same right 
Fair enough. Yeah, I think that's just a thing of the B12. It does the same. All right, let me make sure I don't smack into it and ruin the whole scenario. I think it only tends to happen if you're on... Because you've you probably got automatic firemen on, haven't you? I oh. think it only happens when it's on that. I see, yes. I do have that on. Um... Yeah, that, I don't think it happens when you have that turned off. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, well, I mean, I, I'm sure that's going to cause some controversy uh, in the chat, but yeah. If any, if oh, anyone if good. anyone moans at me for having auto firemen on, I just reply to them. Well, so what? It's realistic. Yeah, that's how that's what I say to that. Because uh, you tell me many situations where the driver also fires the loco. Yeah, indeed, it's a bit of a whiteout, <laughs> Neil. You're right. It does feel like that, especially if you're caught in the uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm obviously afraid that smoke, that's not right, man. Like, it shouldn't linger on for that long. Like, surely, come on, oh, don't linger that long. No, it's, it's <laughs> odd. He, you just turn off that, yeah. <laughs> Guy who just gone white. Just gone in a blizzard. <laughs> don't worry, the stream's not died. We're just in a blizzard. There we go. We're fine now. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, it's certainly different. That's so bad, man. What is that? Why is it doing that on your on yours? I say, it's well, not good. if no one else is getting it though, that's not an issue. You know, I I didn't know it was is a unique thing to me. I mean, to be fair, then that would be nice because uh, if I take screenshots, you'll know it's my screenshots because the uh, smoke lingers for half a mile. <laughs> oh dear. Now, I'll be driving this a lot, especially on this Lynn Hunter Stanton route, because they are basically made for this. They're perfect. Um, one thing I'm planning to do as well, very simple mod, uh, is uh, do a white roofed version of these. Um, Dan asks one thing, I'm glad you're here Neil, uh, is that um, you have labelled, something that needs to be patched at some point, you have labelled one of the claws wrong. Uh, I, I'll show you which one obviously when we get up there, but uh, you've labelled the transitional VR green one apple green one as the royal claude that's not the royal one the royal one was these with a white roof so that's something that could be patched because i intend to do a reskin with a right roof uh, so we can literally have the 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 two royal claudes that went down here that linger man that's that's not right <laughs> i ah, can't well. get over it <laughs> yeah it, it will get worse as we get going but um, yep, we've got the uh, got the empty coaches, we've got the Royal Saloon on the back, ready to go up to Hunstanton. Royal Saloon, and you got um, some of the staff coaches as well. It's not a prototypical train; it's just what we have with the Matrix Trains GNR pack. Uh, but yeah, it works. It works well enough, uh, and it looks similar to some of the Royal Saloons that actually did work on this line. Who knows, if I get good enough, I may model one of the XGE Royal Saloons. There were some beautiful designs. Absolutely brilliant. Um, right, so do, um, we're nearly ready to go. Uh, I think we said we would do a bit of history about the Locos. Um, yeah, Jordan, uh, pull up as many pages as you want to give us a bit of history. <laughs> I could, And I can always fill in some blanks and gaps. Needed. Well, so you're, you're probably going to be the, uh, the first. Well, you, you can go for it. I've, I've been speaking a lot. Yeah, I need yeah, my, my, you've, got, you've probably got, you could have got a manual on you, haven't you, I, I do, yeah. 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 Pull that up just, as well. Yeah, I've just pulled it up. So, to give people some form of context, uh, these are D16-3. Uh, they totaled 104, uh, being rebuilt by 1949. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so as Brad has been saying, they were known for running up this part of the world. Um, I was say, I'm not really. <laughs> do you want me? Do you want me to have a bit more of a go? On, yeah, because the only thing I found interesting with these compared to their predecessors was that they had piston valves instead of the slide valves, which I just love little little mechanical details like that. Differences I find interesting. Hmm. 
Fair but enough. Also, the, the history on these, I'm not <laughs> pretty cool. Well, actually. basically, the uh, Pioneer uh, was... the These have a bit of a lineage. Uh, they were designed by uh, the Great Eastern Railway. Uh, it was a Holden design, if I can remember correctly. I do sometimes get my designers mixed up on that. Um... Do correct me. I'm sure I can get hounded at some point for saying something wrong. I'm going off memory here, so I'm probably going to get something wrong. Um, I'll get something up to try and help. <laughs> I'll pull the wiki up just in case I need to cross-reference any hard facts. But I'm going to drink at the same time. They started as the D14s. Um, that was the original classification. Um, something that is... It's quite unique, I think. I haven't seen many other classes that did this sort of numbering sequence because uh, the numbers of the whole class were a bit whack. They were all over the place. Uh, yes, it was James Holden. Cool. That's good. Got that right, at least. Um, so basically, the original prototype D14 uh, looked very different to this. Uh, if you want to have a uh, sort of take some imagination, I'm sure... If you want to look at some things further and go and do your own research after, please do. But they had a smaller diameter uh, boiler. They had, they did, some of them had round top uh, and some of them did have bell pair fireboxes. It depends on the subclass. There was, in total, the family was about seven or eight different variations, subclasses, etc. Um, but yeah. Smaller boiler, either bell pair or round top, depending on the sub class of D14. They also had a much shorter smoke box. It would come up to about here, uh, and obviously it was very much extended later life. Um, they went different through different variations. As I said, some of them had decorative valences, which did carry all the way through, and it is an option on this pack, which is brilliant. I absolutely love the decorative valences on these engines. Um, the, they had round top bell pairs, they did different diameter boilers, extended smoke boxes. There were so many different variations and it all culminated in what you see here, which was the D16-3. Um, and this is what's nicknamed the Super Claude. They were introduced just after grouping in 1923 and they covered all of the duties that the previous D14s, D15 and D16 1 and 2s did but just they were just that slightly bit better I think they were think they were superheated um, I think yeah I think the originals were saturated boilers um, yeah I'm just gonna scroll through I haven't been look I, mean, I haven't been reading much and paraphrasing much uh, um. Just uh, to stop you there quickly, uh, Listen, Neil yeah. was said something in the chat. By the way, he said um, he said he, he, he said you'll find that the, obviously the two royal claws uh, were apple green with BR numbers from 49 to 51 to slash 52. All right. Yeah. Um. Apparently, so on, hmm. on that. I don't. I don't have recollection of the royal ones being those transitional green. Um, hmm. Genuinely, I'm not sure of that. Uh, I will have to go and research that. I've got plenty of books and articles. I'm part of the Great Eastern Railway Society, so I'll have to uh, go and have a gander at that. I will. I'll be look. I'll be researching quietly in the background once we get going. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, probably Neil's done a lot of research on these. He's probably uh, he's oh, probably indeed, read it somewhere more than likely, more yeah. than likely, indeed. Mm. Yeah, well, don't really get hung up on it, but basically, very complicated lineage. There's, I have found one of the diagrams I remember reading. So yeah, the original D14s, uh, they were last condemned. They were built in 1900, last condemned in 1931. Then they went to D15s. Uh, some were rebuilds and some were as built. They were condemned in 1933. Uh, then you had the D15-1s and dash twos, which were slight variations of that. And then it went to the D16s. Um, uh, the what they were called the su uh, they were Superclords. That was their first name. D16-1 
E16 twos were super clawed rebuild. Um, they were condemned in 1952. The D16 twos as well were technically the royal clawed because they had a bell pair firebox. The D16 threes were super clawed rebuild with round top Gresley fireboxes. And they and the last one was cut up in 1960. Another fun fact is that 8782 uh, was due to be preserved, but sadly was subject to a failed preservation attempt by Alan Bloom, uh, the man who owned Bressingham. So if that had gone through, we would have seen a Claude Hamilton at, at Bressingham Steam Museum these days. Or well, it could have moved on since, but most likely it would have been in the museum with the likes of the E4 and the J69. So it's a real great shame we lost something like that. But yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's so let's, let's go. Know that something's not here. Pardon? Anyway, yeah. Let's let's head on to Hans Stanton. We want to see the different variations of the D16 yeah. Yeah, and all of that, don't we? Yeah. Indeed. Let's go before my uh, internet accidentally cuts out again. Oh no! Don't don't jinx it. No, oh, I'm not going to jinx, jinx it. it. <laughs> right. I, mean, I also want to make sure everything is set because I'm still using manual. Ah no, it's not. Ah, that's that's a good that's a good start, isn't it? Put the brakes on, emergency brakes. <laughs> Never mind. That will teach me. No, what's that, happened? It'll teach me for remembering to set my road before. Well, it's just I didn't. I forgot to set my road. Has he gone down the wrong road? Yeah, he's gone into the siding. Yeah. That'll teach me. Oh no. That's all right. Don't worry, sir. This is a disaster. It's not. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> But it would have been a disaster if I'd have been going any faster. And hit the poppers. Yes. That kind of rhyme. Right. Take the brakes off. Unless I've just... No, there we go. They're coming off. Yeah, big big cloud. <laughs> oh well. I can get grilled for being a bad driver here. Uh, is that yeah, why I might... Yeah. We've all been grilled for our driving. It's terrible. <laughs> Sam, I've seen you do worse. <laughs> um, <laughs> where, where was that? Oh, let me think. I think you've... Um, don't I remember you crashing a DMU on the mid Norfolk? I've, I've, I've crashed a train before. I can't remember what one it was. You've, you've crashed uh, a DMU on the mid Norfolk. Uh, uh, no, it wasn't on mid wasn't on a mid north I've seen um, you do it, not on stream, but you have done it. <laughs> I've done it maybe off stream, yeah. But yeah. I mean, I've, I've done it on a stream once. Oh, this little video, I crashed something, I think. I can't remember yeah. what it was. <laughs> no. Um, uh, oh, that was it. That was it. It was in the West Coast Railways 33 thing. Right. Um, in the video of that, I, I was. The, the, the 33 was too tight in the run round. Right. Yep, and you um, grazed the I side of a coach. The <laughs> Funny story. Yeah. If anyone wants to see, I will. Uh, I did an exact same thing with a one five six. Um, trying to think, a one five six on the North Norfolk Railway. I had uh, a rail tour parked in Cromer, and tried to get one five six around it, but it was too long, and it just. It just scraped, 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 pushed the 156 knee and it tipped it right to its apex. I don't think it actually did tip over, but yeah, it was quite funny. Right, we're going and we're on the right road this time. Oh, hey, we're off from Walton. So where's this train bound for then, huh, Sam? Indeed. The king would not be amused right now. Because remember, we have royalty on board now. So we've got to get up. We've not only got to get our speed going. But, uh, yes, we've got to try and drive better than that. <laughs> we probably would have been uh, fired on the spot for that blunder. Never mind. Yeah, so you've got the banks outside of Wolverton. This has all been redone with VP Grass. Now, one disclaimer I'm going to give, you're going to notice it in this route because it's a work in progress. We've done a ground texture swap, so in some areas that haven't been changed, you're going to get some bad texturing. Uh, coal fields and rock faces are the order of the day. <laughs> oh well, you guys still there? Yeah, I am. Yeah, just for me, for me. I know. I just, I just want you to keep talking 
for at least some parts because I'm worried that if you're silent for more than 10 seconds the stream's died again. <laughs> or my internet, one of the two. So yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm just looking at the, the scenery here, it's looking really nice. Well, apart um, from, apart from the coal we, fields. We need, to, need to ignore the coal heaps because you said that that's, that's a problem, isn't it? it it's, it's, it's a bug with train sim, when you do a ground texture swap it will just plonk in different textures to what, you know, the, the slots that they were in, so, you know, um, different, different asset creators do ground textures in different slots, so it will just swap and change like for like, so if coal was in slot 12 for one developer, but it was grass for another, that's where you get this. Well, we're speeding, but it doesn't matter, we need to get, we need to get a move on anyway, but, uh, in the morning sun with some with some teaks, uh, she really looks apart. But I mean, you, you can kind of see what I mean with the smoke trail, Sam. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's something I definitely don't have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still going, still going, still going, still going, all the way back here. Ah anyway. uh, yes, LJ is just literally just. Um... She, he's just literally. Uh, Thank God I just checked that. <laughs> he was he was going to crash again, wasn't he? I was. <laughs> this is the fun of having manual points with no markers. But yes, we're coming through the first station. We got a B12 waiting in the loop, uh, with some other Teaks and Thompsons and all sorts. Uh, this station hasn't been upgraded yet. It's. Are you joking? Okay. I set the points. I you. think it's because you were speeding. Yes, it's because I was speeding. <laughs> That'll teach me not to speed. That'll teach me not to speed. I did save it though, so it's fine. No, no, I've just seen it back on the stream. You didn't. You missed one point. Did I? That was, that was you. Okay, fair enough. I'll admit. Sorry, to that. Neil. <laughs> we broke your engine. Right. Yes. That's. Uh, oh, it's yeah. fine. It's a bit. Of, yeah, it's fantastic, is it? Oh, it's uh, fine. So Don't worry. We'll just, have to, we'll just have to skip to Stanton now, won't we? Yeah, it makes sense, to be fair. You've seen it, yeah, you've yeah. Seen it run anyway. Um, you've hit... Because we don't want to... Drag out the stream too much. We can always run out, back. No. We can always run back if we've got time later on. Not an issue. Ah, yes. TS 2022. Or shall we say 2012 plus 8. Is it sh soft shade under the loco? What? I can't remember what soft shade actually is. Uh, yeah, I don't know that one. Mr. Doom says uh, no soft shade. Do you mean ambient you, ambient occlusion break? Or do you mean the uh, square shadows that some developers put under their locos? Yeah, jump on to hum honey, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's not a problem. <laughs> they're, they're robust. We'll get there in a second. That's tough when you're trying to chat and drive at the same time. It's yeah, difficult. it is. But when you're going... trying to chat, showcase the route and all that, you get distracted. Bit of everything. You know, what, as I say, it's a work in progress, which is why there's no scenario uh, markers everything's manual currently um and that's that's why obviously you can you can forget if you forget to set one point you're buggered so it's, it's not it's, it's it's in no no means anywhere near ready yet because of that well know, to be fair the you the the manual points that's only because it's a free roam that always gets changed anyway um it's just scenario markers well, say for my moment, just route markers. They don't take too long to do. Uh, signaling is a key factor that um, we're going to get. Hopefully, get some custom signals made, which will be nice. And yeah, ground textures, and then upgrading scenery still in a few areas. You know, it's not it's not terribly far from being complete, but yeah, it's got a fair bit of work to do still. If train sim will ever want to load, that is the question, though. <laughs> yeah, I must admit, it's taking its uh, sweet time. Yeah, never mind. 
Let's see if I can find while we're waiting. I've got my bookshelf right in front of me. Have I got anything on the D sixteens? Hmm. I've got it on roots. Nope, there we go. It's oh, loaded. Yeah, yeah. We're in. Right, and uh, we're in free roam anyway, so we can have a look. This is uh, Hun Stanton, it's the other end of the line. Um, it's got things like it's got this good yard. I did put an AI train there, J15, and a short set. Uh, but if we go over here then, the plan was to arrive nice and sound and then come and uh, reverse in the turntable, but now we'll just come and have a look at some of the variants. So, we've got Apple Green, as we've already seen, but uh, if you put the number in as 2500, which was the original uh, Claude, you will get the nameplates. Uh, these are custom editions, as you can see, Claude Hamilton. Very nice addition. Yeah, very nice, yeah. Mm. yeah. It's a nice uh, Easter egg to have if you just choose that or you just so happens to auto number to that. Um and also you can see the um the difference in the in the side raises, the, the um in the sides now on that variant, can't you, compared yes. to the one we just drove. With the valences, yeah, indeed. Yeah, it's got the mm. valences. There is there there as well. Um so yeah, so you got the uh got this one. I mean, one curious thing about the Claudes um, that I'd like to mention, uh, I was going to mention earlier, uh, about the numbering system. I don't know any, many other loco classes that did it, but the original Claude Hamilton was the D14 numbered uh, 1900. Uh, the significance of that is it was built in the year 1900. So the top brass decided to number it 1900 for the year. Um, but then they had the predicament that the highest numbered loco at that time was 1570, a B12-1. So they were like, well, we've just skipped 300 odd numbered series to go to 1900. We want to fill in some of those gaps. So what they did is every subsequent, um, every subsequent D16, or at the time it was D14, uh, they were rebuilt, every subsequent D14 uh, was then numbered backwards sequentially, so the next built was 1899 instead of the usual, what it would have been 1901. So then it went 1888, 1887. So the, so actually the lower number you saw, the later built it was, which is obviously normally mm. the opposite way around. Just a little fun fact for you there. Uh, so this one here, uh, this is a nice unique one. I uh, show I. I Took, um, put some colour pictures, gave them to Neil and suggested we have this as a variant and yeah, it's in here now uh, this is, it is labelled as the Royal, Royal Claude and this is what has got me a bit confused because I didn't think they were the Royal ones um, but obviously according to Neil, apparently they are so uh, yeah. that is um, something that well, I'm, I'm just going to assume is, is correct I'm quite he's, 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 he obviously yeah. If he's been modelling these these locos, he's, he's obviously done his research. I indeed. Mean, you know, I mean, it, it must be right. Hmm? Yeah, indeed. Uh, mm. But I really like I I really like this. Um, yeah, I have to say I I think it's probably one if not my favourite livery in the pack. Yeah, so I, I like it apple green anyway. But yeah, combining it with com you know combining it together with the BR crests. The lining still, it just looks really smart, I think, and the shed code as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah indeed. So, move on. Um, yeah, so he, uh, he, he just mentioned that 62614 and 62618 were the ones in this particular livery. Indeed. Yeah. Let me have a look. So that, um, that was the, the livery for the those particular class mates. Indeed, I have. And then just... obviously next door we've got the uh, the BR line black, haven't we? And we've got yes. the two black liveries that come with the pack. No, yep, are, com uh... completely true. Yep, no, I've just looked it up on the Steam database. Yep, the first grouping number, the f original number, seventeen eighty seven. LNR 8787, which was one of the royal ones, then renumbered 2618 and then 62618. Yeah. 
I... Ah, there you go, Brent. So these are there the real go. ones you in BR. Wrong. Fair enough. <laughs> I am happy. I am happy to be because, <laughs> apart from anything else, that means this is a possibility for the new build, which would make me very happy when the new build crawl comes along. I really, I really hope they use that livery. If it's going to be a new build, they have to use that livery. It's, just, it's a nice livery. So yes, then moving on indeed, we have the BR. We have BR lined and unlined. And you can see again, this one doesn't have the ver the valences. This one does. And they, they say they're toggleable in the loco code. Uh, these are a nice, very smart pair again. Always like, always like um, the lined, obviously more. I just, I think the lining completes it. But even the unlined is very smart. Uh, Brilliant. No, the, these so these are the four variations. People have asked, why don't you do a Great Eastern to go with it? I think someone probably will do a Great Eastern fictional one at some point, but that's the whole point. They're fictional. Uh, as said, these specific subclass of the Claudes were introduced in 1923, post-grouping. So they never in get carried. The Great Eastern Railway Blue wasn't around at that time, was it? So well, it the Great yeah. Eastern Blue pretty much disappeared from 1914 onwards because um, it was all yeah. replaced by, at that time it was then replaced by World War I lined grey and then 1919 onwards it became train control grey which was blanket plain primer grey all over with huge um, numbers on the tender or sides, wherever, tank side, whichever, depending on the loco. Not the prettiest of schemes, when they obviously compared to Great Eastern Royal Blue, but no, still interesting to see. So those are the four variations um, that uh, are available. So what I'll probably do now is... Yeah, actually, uh, just before... Uh, yeah, no, go for it. Yeah, no, anything else? I was just about to say, could you uh, show off the headboard changing? Uh, yes. Because uh, we've got changeable headboards on them. What I'm going to have to do anyway, I'm going to have to put a driver on to do that anyway. So bear with. Shouldn't take too long at all. Uh, none of these have. There, there is a couple of um, quick drives that come with this pack as well. Just to mention that. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, the quick drives. Um, they require the digital traction teaks. I believe is is one of the requirements true. for it. You are correct. And then you have. Um, I think it's the UKTS freeware pack Mark Ones is for one of them, okay. and then the rest. Uh, just the standard freight, you know, the European loco and asset pack freight sets. Fair just enough. The, the bog standard could you freight stuff, you know. Let's have a look then. Just to get people going. Yeah. So we've got Claude here. But, so you but say. Are control H and then the shift H. There we uh, go. Just scroll through them all. So we have the East Anglian, uh, which is a name train that they quite often did. In later years, they were taken over by bigger engines like B12s and uh, uh, Britannias. B17s as well did as well. So, but uh, lovely one to see. Uh, the Broadsman, the Easterling, the Fenman, the Hook Continental, which went to Harwich, went to Harwich boat trains. Uh, the Norfolkman. And uh, SLS special, isn't that? Isn't that the uh, Stevenson Locomotive Society? If I'm correct. Yes, I think that is. Yep. The Scarborough Flyer, that's a nice one to see. Butlins Express, probably going to Skigginess. And I think, I think we have Skigginess in train sim, do we? Uh, not backdated, definitely not. There is someone working on a modern day one. Hmm. But yeah. No, there's uh, some really nice things there. Uh, there you go, and it's control shift H to go back as well if you want to get rid of them. That's up to you. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, you can scroll through them all. Again, just another little feature that's been added to this pack. Yep. Yeah, I just think that's great for freeware. Like, you know, like <laughs> it's just a great feature. Like, it's not, it's not something you usually see on a freeware model, is it? Having these features. Indeed. No, something new didn't have to do, but it's something that he's done which has elevated perhaps even more. Yeah. Mm. And we say, oh, what was the. Uh, obviously, it's, it's. You say it's shift. No, control. 
for all the discs and brackets? I keep forgetting. Or no, uh, you... discs and brackets are all H. Oh, they're, they're, all they're H. just H. Yeah, they're I just, forget because I'm used. To, I'm used to the Caledonia Works keybind of using Control Shift. You know, all of that. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, that's. Oh, you're gonna test me. I haven't, I haven't done discs in ages. That light engine. Light engine, the centre disc at the bottom. Oh, centre yeah. disc at the bottom, right. That is that's some form of freight, I think. Unfitted freight, I think, is on the left. Um, on the, on that's that light side. engine. Uh, there's also, that's obviously Royal, used before. So yeah, no, it's a brilliant, you can scroll through it, and I think... Uh, you go in the config to use lamps, don't you? I'm not sure if they're easy all set yet. I all think set so, yeah, I think it's in the config. It says it in the manual anyway, so if anyone is interested in uh, knowing how to do the lamps, then please do read the manual. Indeed. Uh, when it's released, and it, and it will be released literally in just a moment. <laughs> Brilliant, that's great news. So if anyone... We're going to be releasing it literally as soon as the stream is finished, and to be honest, I think it's getting to that point where it is pretty... Well... We've done everything, haven't we? We've done uh, mu most of it. I think what I'm going to do just for... Sort of a bit more benefit. We're gonna give it a second. Uh, we're gonna give it a go again. We're gonna drive from. If I go and grab the, the stock, I'm gonna drive the other way round. Gonna go back f the original plan uh, from Hun Stanton down to Wolverton and see if we can go the whole route without crashing. Um, not yeah, crashing so as in temp dumping, but crashing as in my bad driving. <laughs> Okay, so basically, uh, for those of us who are watching now, if you want to continue watching and watch down to, obviously, the um, obviously the rest of the Hunstanton route, then please do stay here. Um, but if you want to leave, uh, then the D16 is going to be available as of now. So I'm going to say to Neil that he can he can release it on all the sites that he was going to release it on, and we'll release it on the BLS site now. And so you guys can go and give it a crack and see what you think. That sounds good. Um... I just have to literally swap the stock over, so I have to go and grab it again. Just seems a bit awkward. Uh, I've got to go and grab that here. Uh, but yeah, if it, uh, anyone does want to stay, uh, I'll just be driving the length of the completed route, showing off some of the completed bits of scenery. So if that's something you'd be interested in, then uh, yeah, feel free to stick around and keep watching. Uh, I'm just gonna grab everything together, uh, cut it, and then I'll paste it back up at uh, Hunt Stanton. So well, I'd just be uh, interested to see what Neil comes out with next. Indeed, um, and he's—I remember saying in his manual—he's um, not gonna try and attempt other variations. I don't think he's gonna leave that to uh, Caledonia Works mm -hmm. to finish off the other variations. Uh, I do remember mentions that, there we go, I remember mentions in the manual that uh, uh, because these these engines shared common parts with some of the more heavy freight engines of the Great Eastern, that may be a consideration, and I for one would be very, very interested in that, and that would be things like the J19, J20. Uh, I mean, Neil, if you're still listening, I'm going to kind of, Hands and knees say, please do a J17. <laughs> um, <laughs> because we have now, there are varying degrees, uh, you know. We we do have a J15, we have a E4, we have an N7, we have B12, we have, an e, uh, we have a J69, um, and we have, yeah, so we have those five, sorry. Those are the five sole survivors of each class. We are just missing the J17 that survives at Barrow Hill, and then we'll have every preserved mainline Great Eastern steam engine. Um, we, there is also the coffee pot, but that would be quite the challenge, I feel, <laughs> uh, to get a co uh, to get the Wi-Fi coffee pot in uh, train sims. So, but yeah, if you're listening, that's my uh, personal Great Eastern fan boy request <laughs> to get the J17 in the game. But uh, yes, because I know it. It was very painful. Um, the it was it was quite it was um, it was quite painful for me. Um, 
Oh, he says, I'm completing the B-17 for the Alinearia. That's something I'm very looking forward to for this route. And then the J-17-9. Neil, you legend. You absolute legend. You're going to make me one very happy man. So is he going to make it, is he? J-17-9. Indeed. Make me one very happy man. There we go, look at that. That would be great, wouldn't it? Yep. That would be fantastic. Looking forward to that immensely. Right. Let's not dilly daddle. Uh, I do need to get the brakes off. Wrong one. Let's, uh, right, so that's it. Basically, the B17, the B17, B17. wrong add on. There we go. Brilliant. And we'll, we we'll take a nice gentle drive. We'll be a bit more gentle this time and uh, make <laughs> sure all the points are set. Uh, good case in point, there is one set against us still, <laughs> but we're good down to here, and it will set us to go straight through. There we go, and then it should go further than that. We'll obviously update soon, but yeah. Um, for those wanting to see a bit more detail, we've got Hun Stanton Yard uh, started laying out point rodding and signalling. Uh, got signal boxes from four aspect simulations he gave us permission to use this in the route because it's freeware um, and that's his from his Fenline uh, project obviously he's modeled some really nice great eastern style signal boxes so they're right at home here um, yeah we'll, we'll leave we'll leave uh, Hans Stanton behind anything you guys think so far Thank you. Yeah, I'm, really, I'm really looking forward to it when it's completely yeah. have a job on it. Yeah. Well, Neil has just said here, J17 or the J, uh, J19 using the same boiler as the Super Claude. Um, if I was to help you and model a, uh, a bell pair for you, would you do the other J17s, Neil? <laughs> Because uh, the the J17 in preservation has a bell pair firebox, uh, and I'd be very keen to see that in the game. So if I gave you the cads for a bell pair, would that be something you would do? I'd be happy to do that for you because it, it wouldn't take me long to model something like that. Yeah, here we go on to the the flats of Norfolk in the morning sun. Yeah, it, it is. Though it's very nature, the whole route is very flat. It's, uh, it's as, as you can like say, the fens, yeah? it's, like the fens. Uh, it's a bit more hilly than the fens. Uh, we'll give it that. Uh, but it's uh, yeah, obviously, it's not say stain more. <laughs> You're not going to have many challenging gradients. Yeah, but then sometimes you don't want to have a challenging one. So you want to have a nice evening, but just. Having a little uh, toot along a nice flat, scenic, beautiful looking route. Indeed, it's nice sometimes, you know, it, 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 you're right, it's uh, dependent on the mood. Sometimes you want a challenge, uh, you know, you're going to exactly. purposely torture yourself by uh, <laughs> by taking 50 wagons up Stainmore Bank. You know, but no, it's just not just a coast along, seven, one in 700 gradient. That's nothing. How does it with the breeze? There's a bit of tar loading that we need to sort out. Another thing, just optimization as a bony route. You know something I have just noticed though, is that your steam effects have seem to fix themselves. Really, Sam? <laughs> uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Famous I'll take last words. I love it. Yeah, it does. It, it, it's just it's just something funny to laugh about, you know. <laughs> so Neil says he likes the look of the terrain. Thank you. Uh, uh, so, so, hang on, have, have our settings reset? Because as um, David has said, we're a bit quiet still. Let's see if I can... Hang on, it's lagging a bit because I'm trying to open OBS at the same time. Uh, I'll turn it down a bit more. We can't turn ourselves up anymore, unfortunately. Uh, we'll Can we not? I thought we could. Yeah, we're on, we're on 100%. Uh, 
uh, I'll turn the game sound down a bit more so we can be heard a bit, bit better. Uh, this is the first station, uh, Heacham, if my memory serves me well. I'm not sure if it does. It's got a turntable. Um, if I come out, it is lagging a bit more than usual. It never normally lags this much. I think it's because I'm streaming it at the same time. Plus, on a Discord call, uh, my internet's probably just having a bit of a paddy tonight. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's got a turntable, two platforms. Uh, and that's because, if you see, that's the line up to Hunstanton. Round here, you've got a long siding. And then this would have used to go to Wells next to the sea. Um, and that would have connected up to the Mid-Norfolk Railway. Because mm. the Mid-Norfolk was... Will Wells next to the sea be in it? Or are you not nah, planning on doing no, that? It's no, only, it's only that line. Which may be, may be something very far considered in the future. This is one of the cameo scenes I'm very proud of. One of the level crossings. You've got uh, a donkey uh, and his owner with barrels of apples, or uh, sort of boxes of apples going off to wherever they need to be. And you've got the station master's house, uh, a couple of bikes lent up against there. Uh, you've got a ladder and back garden, all sorts. You've got their own little allotments. Just try to make it quite detailed. It's the, li it's the little details that really do bring out a route, I find. It is. It's the little things. Yeah. Mm. Indeed. It's, uh, it actually makes you stop to look at the detail on a route, not just carry on driving and just miss half of it. Yeah. That's why I quite like detailed preserved lines, for example, because obviously you're going 25 mile an hour, you pretty much see everything, so it's, it's yeah. good, you know, and you've got good detail. But obviously this isn't a preserved line, this is uh, a, a backdated main line, well, branch line even, but... Yeah, secondary route, it's uh, sort of described as, but even, let's see, I've been fixing ground textures here, you've got the correct ground textures for the ballast here, it looks a lot nicer. Um, so it's all a case of just getting everything up to this sort of standard. Um, as, as Neil says, he, he can't he can't stand the, the sodding bell pairs. <laughs> they are awkward, I will agree, I've tried to model them before, I've got better at doing it now, but I say, genuinely... Uh, Neil, the offer is there. Um, in fact, she's a de <laughs> defo like the mid Norfolk. Well, it's uh, it's it's a lower line speed. It, you you say obviously it's not a main line as such. It's a forty mile an hour line speed throughout. So, you know, it is quite relaxed and you know, some, you know, laid back. Not like you're trying to charge down here at a hundred miles an hour. And a big question is, is when, when you do this route, will you be adding any D16 free scenarios with this route? And of course, of route? course. We'll be doing some Royal Train ones. <laughs> probably do, we'll probably formalise what I've tried to do tonight here as a proper scenario, definitely. Like the um, the Royal Train down to Hunstanton, yeah, that, yes. that one, yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Um... So, I haven't done anything to this bit of scenery here, as of yet, but as we come to the next station, which is Snetsham, around this curve, I've started to do a bit more work to it. Um, you'll be able to see, around here, the change in texture set, and also with uh, what assets are used. Um, because this is really, this is mostly using VP stuff, and the original Great Eastern Mainline. Uh, bushes and weeds i personally not a fan of either uh, so i change it here for uh, a mix of riviera and southampton bournemouth which i feel are just a lot nicer trees i mm. uh, got one of the banks yeah, here and you say this, this route this route was originally made by um wandering 1500 yeah oliver yeah oliver it's, it's by him. yeah mm. uh you got here as well i decided to add this as a sheep field where's our train it's over there, it's fine. Uh, so I'd add a sheep field and little another little cameo scene. So you've got uh, the uh, farmer uh, with his uh, flock of sheep dogs uh, who are trying to round up a rather large herd. Uh, most of them are being well behaved, but a few are sort of straggling off going around here. And you've got to get these dogs controlling them. And a few are uh, getting stuck in this corner and having some escapades and we'll leave it at that <laughs> just a little um, bit that you can do but i love this scene with the you know you can just get the farmer's field you get the uh 
train coming and trundling through. Uh, you got some signals that start to be added in. These aren't these are temporary ones, but uh, again, there's some lovely photos here with the rodding as well. We'll be adding. I must admit that, that looked really nice going across that D16. There, you just saw the shadow of the signal going across the front there. It did look really nice just Indeed. then. Indeed, this is one of my favourite scenes. In fact, I'm probably going to take another photo because yeah. Uh, you got the road actually running right alongside the railway, and it's just a oh. real favourite scene of mine. Yeah. I mean, that's, really that's a train spot. For that. Pardon? Yeah, I agree. Just a saying, you can get some really nice screenshots with this D16 in that light. Definitely, especially with the AP Sky. Well, I've made oh. sure the points are set. <laughs> I am not making the same mistake as last time. And that will go there, and that will go there. So we have a look uh, at Snetsham, another level crossing that's been detailed, another Station Master's house. Um, we've got some different things here, like uh, we've got some uh, washing out to dry. This is you seeing telegraph wires, big kit bash with some mattresses, and some wooden fence posts very much scaled down to look like clothes pegs. I'll tell you what, that's that's proper clever, that is. Did did, did Oliver do that? No, no, I or... did this, yeah, yeah. Oh, you did that? I do all this super <laughs> detailing, yeah. you got flower beds, <laughs> lady attending to it. She's actually kneeling down, uh, which was awkward to try and get looking right. But, yeah, she's kneeling down, attending to it. And you got... That's wicked. So, so basically, that's somebody who was sat on a bench, but you've just sort of made it look them. like she's kneeling down. Yeah, because... Um, what has happened, she's, she's sitting down, her legs actually go straight into the ground. I've then rotated a same character model, but standing, and put them with just their feet sticking out the ground. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. That's a really okay. clever idea on doing that. That's a, I like that. Yeah. It, yeah, I really like that. It matches <laughs> quite well, I feel. Um, mm. And then you see you've got some more flowers. I haven't uh, fully detailed back here, but you say you've got a um, little girl that's playing with some some toys in a garden. Yeah, just little bits of clutter, and you've got a, little goal posts. Yeah, just little things that make it. And you've got the obviously the rodding coming along here, goes under, goes out again. Another signal, and the sign beware of trains. <laughs> uh, over here, you got one uh, sort of a bit of an overgrown siding. Uh, that then leads into a cattle dock, and you got some cattle here. I mean, the, this is awkward alone, just getting all of the fences right, because each one of these is its own uh, separate spline. So that was bloody awkward. And again, yeah, like you're using metal beams here for the troughs, the water troughs. I wanted to put water planes in them, but you couldn't scale them down small enough, sadly. Uh, but you got another signal here. For the junction uh, and again we had had a goods train that was looped in here and the piece of stock seems to have vanished <laughs> but yeah uh, this is mm, that's an E4 there isn't it pardon um, yeah E4 this is Caledonia yeah, E4. E4 yeah again suit they suit the route really well we have got finally got some good great eastern stock and we also now have the P43 uh, so if you want to run this route in Great Eastern Days, which you've got the E4 and you've got the P43 to do a duo, hopefully we get more Great Eastern liveries trains to do it with. Um, then you know we can uh, we can very much see Great Eastern running uh, once we. I know we're getting a, a wagon pack from Caledonia Works in the future. We have the P43, the T26. And then also with uh, the Matrix Trains coaches, it really completes that you can finally do a Great Eastern Era route. So this is yeah, set. Definitely. It's very freelance, but it's mainly aimed at early LNER or Great Eastern and running it now. Yeah. I mean, for Sorry, example... Brad, just, oh, Brad, can I just butt, uh, butt yeah? in just quickly? Uh, Neil's just put in the chat to say he's got to go, so many thanks for all your help with the test. No line. worries. Uh, pleasure to have you on tonight, Neil. You've taught yeah, me anytime, things. Neil. Anytime. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Cheers. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much, Neil. I'll, we'll see you again soon. We'll probably Indeed. chat in the PM and stuff. And uh, we were looking forward to finding out what's going to happen, what you're going to bring out in the future, isn't it, we? Definitely. As I say, oh, yes. J17 will be absolutely 
perfect. I think someone's happy about that. <laughs> Very. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah, no, for example, the reason why this is in for a revamp is um, Oliver built this quite some time ago, and you know, in some areas, it, obviously, it's not it's not a bad thing but you know just the age of it showing a bit um obviously you've got faults like the ground texture needs to be changed but for example ignoring that's a field just imagine that's grass he says this is how he built it with either this or very much kuju assets throughout and i've basically been replacing a lot of those and detailing it so the gardens that you've seen up there this is how they were given to me basically and i've sort yeah, of yeah i mean it's okay to use some could you assets. I mean, you don't have to, you know, go ahead and replace them all. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's he's done a well, he's, he's done a really good job. I mean, oh, from, Oliver from really what, has. You know I mean? Yeah, he's done the cracking job. It's just obviously uh, replacing them with some assets that just look, just sometimes look a bit of a better quality because the assets themselves are built at a later date. Because um, sadly, sadly, you can kind of tell like. You can look at that and say that's Kuju, you know the the, yeah, that's, the uh, resolution. You can get the sort of two thousand and seven rail sim vibes from that. Can't you it? really can. So yeah. you know it's not a bad thing. We're just replacing assets. Here it comes. Same with these platforms as well. They are unmistakably Kuju platforms. I'm re in the process of getting rid of all of those and just you know. So just it's just basically just a small refresh. I mean this will need to be changed. Obviously this was meant to be a Ollie meant this is a cow field, so that's got to be changed. Yeah, he's... And we've got the nice patchy coal, haven't we? <laughs> well, I'm going to get this nice photo here. If I get rid of that bloody message, get me a nice bit. Yeah, this um, looks... It's this route in this light especially does look really nice. There like we the go. Lighting. That's, a, that's a photo and a half. Getting the B12 and the D16 together. Very similar locos, although the, the, the B12 has three wheels instead of the two. Well, as I said earlier, if you literally cut it there, that's a D16. <laughs> that is a D16. And this is what people will say, was saying, you know, the B12 obviously has the correct flared re wheels, green wheels. But yeah, if you just look at there, that is a D16, just a 440. The B12, and you just imagine the cab being further forward, everything's a bit further forward. The B12 is just an a lot is stretched out version. It's really as simple mechanically as that. Oh, everything start loading in. The big forest starts loading in. So this is pretty much where we uh, got to before. So once we get into Wolverton, we will sign off. Um, if you have a look on the map, uh, we're here. Wolverton's down here. Again, I'll make sure the road's set. There we go, that's all set for the platform. Uh, you can see it goes further. Uh, it does go for Wolverton. I, I can't remember the name of this station for the life of me. Uh, and then it goes into Kings Lynn, which is a big, uh, you know, big obviously junction. Yeah, it looks like a huge station, that, doesn't it? Yeah, you had the docks line going up here, uh, up this spur up the top. Uh, then down there was the main line to London, which is now available as the Fen line. Uh, you, you know, that's Ely to Kings Lynn. Uh, and then down there, you'll like this, um, you'll like this, uh, Sam. It went uh, via Swatham to Deerham. Oh, nice. That went to Deerham yeah. in steam days. And this is actually currently still open uh, as, part, uh, as far as a small tiny station down just as far here called Middleton Towers. It's used as a sand terminal. Uh, the rest of the line, though, to Deerham is long gone. But, yeah. And the main main station there. Yeah, so, and I'm guessing you're not going to add the Deerham bit. It's just literally you're just doing Kings Lynn, Hunsland, 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 Hunsland. Yeah, yeah, indeed, <laughs> yeah. indeed. Yeah, it's just a nice little passion project which will give us a route for all of these pre-grouping and grouping LNER locos, especially of Great Eastern Origin. Well, I mean, in, in grouping as well, you've got to imagine though other ones would have come down here you would have had the b17s very regularly you would have had uh things like you know uh what was it the j39s um c1 atlantics probably would have been seen here all sorts especially uh, j21 
maybe i think they're more northeastern it would have been a stretch for them to come down here we're gonna well overshoot the platform by the way <laughs> of course we're gonna end we started with my bad driving we'll end with my bad driving i got distracted uh, yeah you need to work on this <laughs> <laughs> indeed i do but uh we'll slam his majesty does not approve oh he oh i would have been fired long ago <laughs> Well, yeah, especially if you had the Queen on board, you would have well, been the, screwed. As again, King at this time, it was King George VI, if my history lessons taught me anything. Uh, Does that even have a passenger view, that, that little compartment? Really? Genuine good question, I'll check now. I, I think it does. I'll slink back into the uh, platform, ashamedly. <laughs> Not <laughs> amused. Uh, this is, those are the actual, the, the other ones. Do they, can you go between them? No. If you do control and... Um... Either the left or the right arrows, it should change hmm. if they do. No, no just these it. two. Never mind. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> it says East Coast route, so, it, it, so that's quite a prototypical piece of stock, isn't uh, it? Not really. These are northeastern saloons if you want to be really technical. Um, you would need a proper Great Eastern saloon. I've overshot again. Jesus, it's I'm just tired. I'm really, yeah, no, really tired. It's just we'll, ridiculous. we'll leave it there. We will leave it there. The, the, he can, he, the king can walk out and up to the platform. <laughs> and yeah, we're in a blizzard again. Okay, yeah, so don't forget, so he said, oh, they said, don't forget the current Y14 currently uh, available. It's yes, I missed that. Um, yeah, you do have that, although um, I'm not being rude to the current Y14. But the Great Eastern livery is completely wrong there. Um, I myself have tried to do a patch to more closely match it with the much more accurate Caledonia Works version of the Great Eastern livery. Uh, they used the wrong shade of blue and the decals for GER are about five times over scale. And genuinely, that's not an over exaggeration. They are very much the decals are over, over scaled on the tender. So I've tried to fix that, but the problems stretch further they've got simulation issues it's not as powerful as it is in real life and the model itself is too over proportioned plus it's based purely on the preserved version meaning that half the working days ones that are in the pack are just completely incorrect and uh, they don't have any of the detail mm -hmm. differences so yeah Caledonia Works Y14 is coming. We are very, very, very much looking forward to it. I am, I'm helping Chris Wilson of CW2 with the reference and research. Um, I think we've provided over 30 different livery variations uh, to him, uh, 20 of which are purely preservation. It's done that much and carried that different different liveries. Um, but yeah. We're hoping it's going to be one whopper of a pack when that Y14 drops. Because you've got to remember, there was 289 Y14s. There's a fair bit of class variation there. Um, Lots it, of research to do as well. Hell of a lot. But uh, again, being a, the Great Eastern Railway Society, I've had access to drawings. I've given him plenty of drawings and um, things like that. Uh, diagrams, paint codes, all sorts. Um, <laughs> David, better than nothing at all. Indeed, indeed, um, better than nothing at all, but uh, yes, looking forward to the replacement, very much so, because uh, I think we're long overdue a nice new spec Y14, um, as it's one of my favourite preserve locos on the current North Norfolk, one of just favourite preserve locos in general, uh, 564 is a little beaut she is, um, but yeah, no, I, I um, Looking forward to anything new, Great Eastern. I know Chris has got the B12-1 and the D14, D15 in his pipeline, which, again, really, really interest me. Uh, he was going to do the J17, but he lost the CAD on a hard drive failure a couple of years ago and never really picked up the project again, which is a great shame. But, yeah, no, we'll, we'll keep going. And then, obviously, as well, to top it all off, if I can ever get it out the door, we've got my freeware uh f5 which who knows i could uh if i can crack some animations i may try and collaborate with neil on that <laughs> yeah that would be good that would be yeah, very yeah. nice yeah, good idea. if i can animate that you know which isn't too hard i mean I, I know roughly how to do animations i've just cracked animations statically 
there with uh, an animated some signal levers just as a test. Um, yeah, and you also, you also did the, the the boards for the for the upcoming uh, bitten line and and well the the bitten line section on the North Norfolk Railway, isn't it? Uh, indeed, yeah. By uh, indeed, yeah, uh, by you and uh, Oliver. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Well, the the bitten line itself is purely my own work. Uh, it's just the bit with the North Norfolk I've collaborated with Oliver on. Um, indeed, even on the North Norfolk, it's. Didn't, we didn't plan it that way, but it worked out pretty much that other than a few bits of collaboration here and there, Oliver generally did most of the North Norfolk section. I genuinely generally did most of the bit line section. You know, we both did little bits of scenes here and there on each, on each other's parts, but it just, I don't know, worked out that way. And it seems right, considering I'm doing the rest of the bit in line, for me to do the sharing them to Chroma section. Because what I'm planning to do is just basically rip those tiles out fully scenic and plonk them into the current bit line yeah that'll be cool wouldn't it indeed indeed yeah. uh so yeah. yeah um but yeah but i think i think i said i think we should leave it there now don't you reckon i think we've yeah we've finished our stream i think we've covered uh, everything about the the six things i can't think of anything else to add to yeah, we've had a we've had a good what well, uh a good nearly two hours talking about it oh yeah <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem things. like that, oh, that um, yeah, you're so, right there. Pretty much. Anyway, as I was saying, um, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, obviously, check out the BLS uh, website, which is linked in the description of this video, to go ahead and grab yourself the D16 Free by Neil. It's, it's a fantastic product, isn't it? It's, it's, it's really good for freeware. Oh, we indeed. We can all agree. It's, uh, indeed. done a really cracking job on it. Cracking job. I, I yeah. probably couldn't say, you know, I, I couldn't really, you know... S Apart from those very minor things with the particles, which we've established tonight, it's probably just a me thing. No, I cannot see anything yeah. wrong that is able to be corrected. I know people will still mm. moan about certain aspects, but it's limitations, and you've got to just yeah, accept and, and that. If anyone, if anyone says anything about those cylinder cocks, you know, because the cylinder cocks don't make the whoosh sound ah. at the moment. Uh, that will be rectified. Neil's already said that will be rectified in a patch in the future, but That's at the good. moment he can't do it. It's it's a lot of work, and it's not. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's yeah. gonna take a little while. But I mean, that's yeah. also another good thing is that you know Neil's open open to feedback, and he's uh, happy to patch things in if things need to be. So you know, as much as you say say give constructed feedback is what we're asking. If there's genuinely little small niggles that haven't been already stated to not be able to be fixed just give us a shout send a message on the bls page or uh try and get a hold of neil or something like that and just let let us know in some form or another comment on the video uh and you know if it's feasible to be fixed do our best to do it mm. and uh, that's all then so that's been brad wright of traction studios and it's been me samuel beeman of bls with jordan and yeah, that's pretty much all yeah. we have for this evening. I mean, uh, uh, thank you, thank you for all watching. Uh, if anyone, I'll I'll probably share this around on Traction Studios. Uh, if you decide to watch that, personally, just want to say sorry for the absence. I haven't been very active, but open to get into it. Um, you will have seen hopefully the post of the new 309s uh, that we're working on a big rolling stock project. Uh, that's going to be really cool, uh, as well as Mid Norfolk is ninety nine percent there. <laughs> Couple of custom it's, assets, it's, 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 and it's going it's out. It's very close. Very it's, close. Just, it, it just needs the bits sort of. In, just, there's just patches that need filling yeah, up really with it. It's minute. just a few mm. customs currently, and it's dumb, honestly. And that awkward track rule bug, which uh, we have found someone who can fix it now, which is brilliant. Um, oh good! Shout and out! Shout main, out to link. Uh, pardon? Oh great! That yeah, shout fantastic. out to SG Simulations. He's going to help fix it. Um, amazing guy he is. Um, he's, he does a lot of his own stuff. He did the Somerset Dorset revamped project, and he laid all the bit in line for me. So, yeah, he's happy to help us out there. And we've also got the project with the Cultures to Clacton NSC, and that's going really well. And we'll be sharing updates of that. So yeah, all in all. I'm happy to happy to join you tonight, Sam. Thank you for having me. Um, no problem at all. Happy Enjoy happy to try and help you know step in, help out a friend in need because I, I know you had a bit of a 
trouble of finding who could stream. So yeah. Yeah, we had a we had a bit of a a mess about this morning because the main stream uh, dropped out at the last minute due to a family uh, a family thing. Yeah. So um, we had to quickly fill in. We needed to get someone to fit to fill in his spot. <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, Bright's done a better job than I could have done. Yeah. Apart <laughs> from the driving, <laughs> I will yeah, admit. I, I, I will admit. I I haven't driven a steam engine in a while. I've been, I've been mostly out of the game developing. I haven't done much driving. It's either been route building or developing externally. So yeah, getting in and driving again for the first time in a while, I have done pretty terribly, and I'm proud to admit it. <laughs> uh dear. If if this had been for another king two hundred hundred years earlier, I would have been beheaded quite easily. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 drove around in an unsafe manner. You nearly you did crash the train once. You nearly crashed the second time on a siding. Yeah, you're getting you're getting beheaded, mate. <laughs> yeah, you're you're, you're stacked. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Anyway, we're rambling. Thank you for everyone for joining us tonight. Anyone who watches this afterwards. And uh, I shall put myself. I'll stop the stream now. Um, yeah.